Buddy? Well, I'm uh, just uh, heading down to get some stuff. We're having a little damn party tonight. I'm going to get some beer and some uh, dessert for the family. Anyway, um, I've decided, as I mentioned in the conductor's video earlier today, that I was going to make this channel the official vid response channel for those types of things. It's going to be my first uh, vid response. Really, it's going to be an answering a question. I did a video a couple days back about the Japanese bath, and uh, FuzzyPaw17 wanted to know if I if had any stories about baths. And I'll, I'll share one with you. I can't remember my first experience with a bath, but I'll share, uh, I, hopefully might, you might find an interesting anecdote. Um, really, there are two types of uh, you know, public baths in Japan. There's the onsen that everybody knows about. That's the uh, kind of the public resort type of a bath. That's kind of fancy and nice and has a different temperature baths and the like. And then there's another type called the sento. And sento is really uh, an old, uh, the type that is basically a true bath. It's, you know, back in the day, People, everybody didn't have a bath in their house. There was um, some people basically had to uh, had to go to a public bath where it was basically one facility where the neighborhood would come to bathe. And um, perhaps my most interesting memory or my most pleasant memories were of the Sento uh, near my little tiny apartment in Osaka where I lived in Sakai City. This was 20 odd years ago, and a little tiny neighborhood, and lots and lots of uh, people in that neighborhood didn't have their own bath. And so there was a small sento there, and you go in, and you could have a coupon, you could have a card, like a, like kind of like a, a train, you know, pass to get in, or, or you could pay per visit. And there was a side on the left for the women, the pink curtain, and the side on the right for the men with the blue curtain. And you could just go where you needed to go. Um, this particular sento was interesting because that area was had um, lots of uh, yakuza, and um, the yakuza typically are not allowed in public baths. The, ta well, the way they keep them out is they they, uh, they have a policy of no tattoos. So, you know, if a yakuza member is tattooed, then they can't get in. But um, these guys, um, this was there were so many in the neighborhood. It was kind of like their place. So I'd go in there, and uh, there would be uh, there would be always be yakuza in there. I, I didn't. I had a little bath at the place, but sometimes I went there for fun. It was kind of. I was really into trying to get into all the feeling of the Japanese culture then, and. Uh, my very first time, though, I was shy to go in there, and I asked a friend to take me, uh, to go with a Japanese man, and to take me. And he took me to this sento, and I didn't know that there were Yakuza then in, that visited it. And we get in, and we we walk in, and you should have seen the look on his face. And we walk into that room with all this room full of tattooed guys, you know, these tattooed bodies. Now, I wasn't scared of the Yakuza then, and I'm still not scared of him now. I've, I've never had anything but good experiences with him. Except the one time that a couple of Yakuza decided to beat up a dude next to me once. That, but they weren't beating me up, they were beating that dude up. Anyway, I, I, I did a video about that called Japanese Street Fight or something like that. On this channel, uh, on Lyle's Brother channel. Anyway, um, we walk in, there's all these guys in the big burly guys, you know, skinny guys. But they all look scary, you know, various sizes and shapes. They've got the tattoos. They're not the tattoos in the conspicuous locations. The tattoos tend to be in a more hidden location, you know, like under under the where, where the shirts would hide. Konnichiwa. Under the shirts or something like that, you know, not coming up to the collar or something like that. Beautiful tattoos. And we go in, and my friend goes ash, and you know, he's a businessman, and he's here he's suddenly in this room with all these yakuza. And we sit down, and I'm having a little fun with him, you know. Okay? And I'm kind of like, I'm like, he's sitting next to me, and there's a yakuza here running next to me. And I'm kind of a silly guy, I wouldn't do this now, but I'm like nudging him, and I'm going, he's going yakuza, yakuza. And he says, shut up, he says, yorosai, yorosai, shut up. I'm, going, it's, I'm trying to say, konito wa. Yakuza, yakuza desu ka? Yakuza desu ka? He's like, shut up, shut up. He, yeah, I really made him flinch. Really mean of me. I shouldn't have done that. But he was, he was, a, he was the kind of guy that was into our kind of humor. He was a rare Japanese man that liked the uh, like weird type of humor that my friend Pat Kwan. This is maybe the first time I've ever mentioned Pat's name ever on YouTube. Pat, I've got a ton of Pat Kwan stories to tell you. Uh, one of my uh, one of my great friends from college that followed me over to Japan after I came is still here. He's got four kids living down in uh, Nara, and uh, it, I mean he's one what a guy. And Pat Kwan, we had our little gang just like Molly and I now. Pat Kwan and I and our and our gang of guys then. So anyway, there we are, the uh, little sento with the yakuza in it. Those guys, I'd come back there sometimes on my own, and those guys would tell me stories or try to tell me stories. My Japanese was always has always been so poor and have fun with me. They were always treated, I'd see them at the, uh, sometimes I'd go to the um, festivals, I'd see the same guys there, and they'd give me savas, you know, a little uh, yakitori or whatever. They always seem to be uh, in part of that deal. There you go, the Yakuza at the Japanese Sento. Not much of a story, but hopefully something to entertain you for a few minutes while I walk to the supermarket. And here's the supermarket. Time to get some beer and ice cream.
Here we go. See you. Rip.